It is great that we are gathered by him around his word and especially today around the sacrament, around Christ's body and blood, uh, which brings us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Uh, So I pray that uh, today is a blessing for you as God brings his gifts to you and empowers us to live uh, the lives that he has called us to live, the life that Jesus gives to us. Today we will be uh, looking at a little bit about that life, but particularly the way that Jesus lives as we look at his most, one of his most famous sayings, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, so that will be kind of our theme for, for today. Uh, just a reminder for communion, uh, when we get to communion, when you come down uh, the aisle, there will be uh, the host, the bread in the middle. Uh, both sides will co- be uh, welcomed forward at the same time, and then there will be two stations for uh, uh, wine for Christ's blood to be received on both sides. So just a reminder that we will have communion that way. Also, just please take note in the front of your bulletins, if you're unfamiliar with what we teach and practice here uh, at Good Shepherd as part of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, our communion practice can be found uh, in the front of the bulletin. Uh, so take a look at that to see if this is what you confess as well. <clears throat> Uh, With that, we don't have any other announcements this morning, so let us join in singing our opening song, Thine is the Glory. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is our cornerstone. On Him alone we build. In Him we are a newborn, chosen, priestly people. We are called to proclaim His excellencies to the world. And so, in light of that calling to proclaim God's excellencies, God reminds us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so let us take a moment of silence to reflect on that confession of sins and in light of God's word. Most merciful, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We are sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. We have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve the presentation of the punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. We are a newborn, chosen, priestly people. And so as his priestly people... In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We sing together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the cornerstone and foundation upon which your church is built. So tear down all that we have built that was built apart from you. And tether us upon yourself, our rock and our redeemer. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading today for uh, the fifth Sunday after Easter comes from Acts uh, chapters 6 and parts of 7. And here we see that Stephen uh, is called to lay down his life for the sake of the gospel. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. So, brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. 
we will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. And so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. But opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. And these men began to argue with Stephen. To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was put into effect through the angels, but have not obeyed it. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God look he said I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God at this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him meanwhile the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First Peter 2, 2 through 10, 1201 in your Bible. Built on Jesus, we are a chosen people. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be holy and priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in this scripture it says, See I lay the stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now you who believe this stone is precious, but those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they disdain for him for. But you are chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the priest praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received the mercy of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able out of reverence for the life and ministry of Jesus. Alleluia, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Yeah. 
If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the place, you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. But from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and at this time, the children are welcome to come forward for a children's message. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Cora. How are you? Hi, Quinn. Hi, Avery. There's so many of you here this morning, which is so fantastic. Oh, you've got a kitty on your shirt. That's awesome. That's so great. Here, come up here, buddy, if you want to sit up here. You have fire trucks on your shirts? That's so awesome. Hey, what do fire, speaking of fire trucks, what do fire trucks go and help uh, uh, other people with? Fire. Yeah, yeah. They don't set them, right? They put them out? Right, yeah, yeah. Unless they're practicing, then they set them, right? <laughs> yeah, so they go on their way. They know the destination to where they're going. And there's something that we talked about in our gospel reading that Jesus wants us to know about as Christians. He talked about the way. Can you make a W with your fingers? Like this? Take, take your two hands. Yep, put them together. Put your thumbs together. Yep, like that. The way. Everyone say, the way. Good. Yeah, Jesus talked about the way, and then he talked about the truth. Can you make a T? Can you make a T with your hands like this? Yeah. Good. The truth. Say that with me. The truth. Yeah. And then he talked about the life. Can you make an L like this? Good. Yep. Hold it out right in front of you. L for life. So he talked about being the way. Make a W with me. He talked about being the way. And the truth, good. And what else? And the life, yeah. So Jesus wants us to know that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And kind of like fire trucks know the way to go to the place that they need to help out, the truth is someone is in trouble and their life is at stake. Jesus, hey, Cora, check this out. Can you sit up with us? Good job. That's great. Jesus knows the way of salvation for us, and the truth is that we haven't really always been 
good. Raise your hand if you didn't listen to your parents once this week. Yeah, me too. Yeah, no one wants to admit it. But sometimes we have trouble listening to people who know the way. Our parents have gone the way before us, and they know the truth of Jesus. And you, hey, boys and girls, can you look up and hear me? Hey, girls, girls, can you look up and hear me? Your parents know the truth. Make that tea with me. Make that tea. Use your hands and make a tea with me like this. Good job. Your parents and all of your other family members know the truth so that you can have life in Jesus' name. Make an L with me now. Make an L with me. Yeah. Your parents know the way. They know the truth so that you can have life with Jesus too. So I hope that you can remember and talk with one another and your families about Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Why don't we fold our hands together and close our eyes and pray. And if you're a big person in the pew, you can pray with us too. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you you. for being the way, way. for being the truth, truth. and being the life. life. Help us us. to believe in you you. and and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, you can head back to your seats and we will continue by singing our hymn of the day, uh, hymn 526. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the greatest marketing tools that really, well, wasn't said to be a marketing tool at all was invented early on in the history of great civilizations. It came from the Roman Empire. As their power and prestige and knowledge and... and, uh, Uh, life began to encompass all of the known world, a phrase started to come up that really put them on the map. People started to say to one another, all roads lead to Rome. It wasn't invented to be a great marketing phrase, but it, it encapsulated that everything that centered around the world led back to Rome. No matter where you were, if you found yourself on a road, you'd find yourself cemented all the way back to Rome. You could walk and follow that road, and supposedly it would lead you all the way back to Rome. But once that great empire fell and the world started to realize that there was more of the world around, we started to make a shift away from all roads leading to one specific place i mean now you have cars named after their ability 
to not follow a road, right? You've got an expedition. You've got an excursion. You've got a rogue. You've got a pathfinder. Everything that you see, even on TV with trucks and Jeeps, they're all known for making their own path, blazing their own trail, and making a new road that you don't have to follow. That's not just with cars, right? I mean, we're, we're inundated with this too. In our jobs, now you've moved from having a belief that there was one road and you would stick with that one company throughout your entire lifetime to now where it's expected that if you don't change the jobs every three, four, five years, then it seems like you're not pursuing a good road. You're not proving that you have any desire to further your own road. So it's very easy to believe today the very opposite of the phrase, all roads lead to Rome. We might say today, my road leads to whatever I, wherever I want it to lead. Our minds assume that travel does not need to be on a road that everyone else takes. We also tell ourselves that the destination or the goal of our lives doesn't really need to be what others tell you it needs to be. You get to believe your own path. And that mentality dominates how we know Jesus to be the way the truth, and the life. But it's not just personally that that mentality affects our life. It's actually here in the church collectively. As a body, as a congregation, the church, not just here but at large, has faltered into this mentality that we as individuals can just blaze our own path. The church has fallen into this and left Christians, you and me, to make our own path. Even though Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life, Our Christian life, let at home, at work, and in the world, often, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes can feel disorganized, chaotic, and sometimes can feel like it's lacking a point or a destination, a a goal. We are so used to, to trying to customize our own path in, in work, in everyday life, that it bleeds into how we live our Christian life rather than our Christian life bleeding into every other area and showing us who is the way. And it's hard to find a way that works even when we know the, the truth even though we know that he has life. Here's an example of how it has played out in the church. Oftentimes we, well, next Sunday we have, no, two Sundays. (laughs) Two Sundays uh, from now we have Confirmation Sunday coming up. And we typically tend to think in the church that Confirmation Sunday is one of the most difficult times in the church because we fear that the next Sunday they're not going to come back. There's, there's jokes about this, right? I mean, if you, if maybe you've heard this uh, sometimes when a, a pastor might say, um, uh, how do you want to get rid of the bats in the church? Well, you just confirm them. <laughs> it's sad. Because we know that there's a reality that the way that we are leading Christians does not match up with the truth and who is the life. 
But here's an example of how it is even more shocking. In 2019, a survey in the LCMS that just looked at the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod alone found that 40% of baptisms that were done 14 years earlier, 40% of those baptisms did not result in a confirmation of that child's faith. So from the time a child was baptized in 2005, when they had the opportunity, seemingly, to, per, to confess and confirm their faith publicly in front of other people, when they were 14 years old, 40% of them did not. I would suggest to you that it's because... We have missed that Jesus is the way. And because we have missed that Jesus is the way as the church, now we are left as individuals to figure out what that way is, and everybody seems like they can choose my own path, even though we know the destination. And that result has led to parents, individuals, and children's to fend, children to fend for themselves on the road to try and maintain knowing who Christ is. I mean, you could probably think to yourself of a friend or a family member who has been trying to maintain knowing the truth and knowing the life, the destination, and yet... They've stumbled off onto their own path. And now truth seems to be evading their life, resulting in a risk coming to their present life and their eternal life. When you think of that person, it's hard to hear Jesus' words in John chapter 14, verse 1, when he says to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. How is there anything else but to have our hearts troubled when you hear numbers like that? When you think of family or friends who are out on their own way and are missing truth and have risk on their life. And yet Jesus still did say, do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus still did say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's quite interesting that in John 14, we have the disciples all gathered around on Monday, Thursday. And you remember what happened on Monday, Thursday? Certainly, Christ gave us communion and united his disciples around his body and blood. But there's one instance that I'm talking about in particular with one disciple who was right there with the way, the truth, and the life. And yet, when he saw his own way, Judas Iscariot went down that path. And yet, Jesus still spoke that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't even want Judas to be troubled in his heart. It's not just Judas either. In John chapter 13, right before our reading, Peter shows some of his doubt. Jesus comes to him and says, I'm going to die, and Peter says, far be it from you, Lord. Jesus reiterates to him, I'm going to die, Peter, and Peter says, then I will die with you, and Jesus says, no, you'll actually fall away from the way. And even in our gospel reading here today, Thomas himself shows the way of his own doubt when he says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. Because they're all thinking of their own path, of their own destination, and what it's going to look like, rather than who is the way. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled, and I am the way, the truth, and the life, because he wanted his disciples then to know himself. 
He wanted them to know himself, which means that he as the way is the means by which you travel so that you would know the truth of who he is and what he brings, which is life. Jesus made himself known to his disciples in the miracles. He even says this in the gospel reading. If you don't believe in me and who God has made me to be and the words that I have given to you, at least believe on account of the miracles. But the fact of the matter is, most Christians don't believe in Christ because of the miracles. They believe in Christ because of who he said he is who he makes himself known to be to you. See, he gives himself to his disciples to believe in rather than expecting them to figure out the way of this new life on their own. But it doesn't come at that moment. It doesn't come when he starts talking to them that first Monday, Thursday, because we know what it leads to next. It leads to the cross on Good Friday, where it seems like the only way is now gone. Jesus' message to them is that you must die to your own way and find my way. All roads don't lead to Rome, but the one road comes from the cross of Christ, and it leads, though, to something spectacular that he gives to you and to me. It leads to the tomb, where we find our way dying, but we find that the road does not end there. It continues out from the empty tomb, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen. He's risen for the disciples there that fell away from the way. He's there for you and for me when we have trod down our own way. He's there for the 40% who didn't and didn't confirm their faith over the past 15 years. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life And the beautiful thing about that is when we see that there is one road from the bottom of the cross to heaven with the Father above, the beautiful thing is that all the disciples in the many ways that they trod, all forgiveness leads them back to one path. But from there, Jesus branches them out and sends them forth in the beauty of like like a tree spreading out all over the world with its many branches covering the entire world. There is one way. He is the way. And yet he invites the disciples like Peter to go and live and proclaim this life in this truth so that others would know the way. He sends people like Stephen who although he didn't know what his way was going to be like, was all of a sudden invited from the community to help serve tables. And it ended in Stephen giving his own life on this way. Because he knew the truth, that after the fact he would have life with him, no matter what happened in this life. And as for Thomas in our gospel reading, Thomas is known best for doubting the resurrection. And yet as history would tell us, Thomas, when his doubt was healed and he was sent on his way, traveled possibly all the way to China to witness and spread the gospel there. So here, for you and for me, We come today with lots of individual things on our hearts and minds. Maybe you woke up this morning and it was difficult to try and get ready yourself or get other people ready. And you came as an individual, but now here today in this meal, Christ unites us as one people. We are not individuals, although we have had many individual paths that have walked in here today. There is one aisle that we will all walk down. 
There is one body, there is one blood that we will receive today showing us the way forward for our lives. All roads don't lead to Rome, but the one way Jesus leads us to truth. And the truth is this, that you have the forgiveness of sins here today proclaimed to you. You have life because Jesus has, will put himself into you with his body and blood and revive you to a new life. And that will send you on a new way out these doors to live for one another, to sacrifice for one another. And that's what Jesus did in his own life, isn't it? His life... He lived on the way for the disciples. What else did he do but live and die for his disciples and he became their new family? What else did he do but teach them the truth so that when they were tempted to find their own truth and way, they stood firm? What else did he do but show us the way to our Heavenly Father so that we would have eternal life now that means that this life that we live, we lead it in truth because we now know the way. So I want to ask you this. How is your life going to be now lived in truth towards your family, towards your friends, and towards yourself? Because one of the things about the example that we brought up earlier about not just confirmation, but about baptisms and continuing the faith, Christ is the answer. He is the truth. He is the life, but he sends you on his way. A way in which he has already walked. He walked with his 12 disciples, and so you don't walk alone. You don't blaze your own new path. You blaze a path that Christ sets before you and walks with you because here in this meal, he is with you. So you know him, and you are known by Jesus. So live his life. Live his truth. Live your life along his way. And let us together as the church live our life in his truth. A truth that we will confess in the creed in just a few moments so that we might walk together along his way. For young, for old, and for all in between. For those who believe and are struggling to believe and those who have yet not believed and need to hear, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in him. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding keep and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we confess, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary was made man, and was crucified also for us on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and sent into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, we bring before you all those who have built their lives on something other than you. We pray that you would draw them to yourself that they may build on a sure foundation. Christ is our cornerstone. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for all those who have trouble in this world, including the homeless, the poor, the lonely, the unemployed, those who are abused, and those who are taken advantage of. Lead each of these to find steadier situations, and if it be your will and we are placed with an opportunity to help them, grant that our lives would help them, be, help them build on you. Christ is our cornerstone. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for all those with struggling relationships, whether that be in friendships, family, or marital struggles, or anything else. We pray that you would bring reconciliation in the midst of such struggle. Remind your people that they are chosen and holy and called to reflect your forgiveness. Christ is our cornerstone. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for our nation and its leaders for our president and vice president and their staffs, for Congress and all lawmakers, for the Supreme Court and all judges. We pray that you would shine your wisdom upon these, your servants. Guide them to perform their tasks with justice and equity. Christ is our cornerstone. Lord Jesus Christ, look with favor upon all who are sick or injured or recovering, especially uh, for the family of Bernice at her death, who is the sister of LaVon Schimmelfinnig, for Leanne Stevens, for Neil, brother of Marion Bralia, for Johnny Cordiva, for Pastor Bob Bruski, for Naomi During, for Byron Cherney, for Merlin Groth, for Bill Betterman, Wes Hoytia, for Nathan and Faith Jockey for Marion Bralia, for Cora Cashmark, for Lynn Bone, for Diane Schwanke, for those who are struggling with a battle with cancer or a recent cancer diagnosis, that they would have peace in the midst of life, for Jerry and Nancy Hetland, for Addie Mork, for Evelyn Bulky, for Mark Peterson, for Donna Menard, for Chet Hull, for Judy Shorter, for Tom Silver, and Nancy Silver, for Spencer Thorsland, for Michelle Maidenwald, for Norma Olson, and Jane Close, and for Mike Neewind, and for Greg and Jeannie Randolph, and for any on our hearts and our minds at this time. Have mercy upon them and restore them to health according to your wisdom. Christ is our cornerstone. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend all these people and situations into your hands, for you have promised to hear our prayers and intercede for us, and you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our tithes and our offerings, the first fruits that God uh, gives to us.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, who bore our sins and the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. As we are gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. I'm 
take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin
please stand as you are able. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this meal. Daily remind us of, your, of our identity in you as newborn, chosen, priestly people, called to proclaim your excellencies through Jesus Christ, who is the way, who is your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Christ is Our Cornerstone. God's blessings and God's grace and his mercies be abundant to you this day on, on this wonderful Sunday. Just a few announcements before we head off to where God takes us along our, on our ways. Um, let's see. Uh, I will be out of town from Monday afternoon to Wednesday uh, morning, which means that there will be no adult Bible class on Wednesday. So uh, if you're used to coming to that or you were thinking about coming to that, uh, that is on hold on Wednesday. I'll be at the State Pastors Conference in Brainerd. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. But uh, there are a few other things. Um, uh, our mission and ministry groups will have a meeting uh, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m., following the executive council meeting. So if you're part of a mission or ministry team, uh, please make sure that you check your mailboxes. There's a reminder with a note in there. Uh, and uh, just put that meeting on your calendar. It should be good to hear uh, what, what all things are going on and how we can support each other. Uh, confirmation class, we are going to celebrate all our hard work this year together on Wednesday, have our confirmation party and have some food uh, and supper together and watch a movie. So that will be a lot of fun. And then confirmation Sunday is also May 21st. So confirmands, if you still have those quarter sheets with your information, uh, particularly eighth graders, uh, if you have your information sheets that uh, were given to you at confirmation, make sure you get those back into the office. If you need one, please check with me or, or Deb. Deb or Deb. Um, <clears throat> uh, so you can, uh, if you need a new one. Uh, starting May 15th, this is pretty exciting. There's a women's Bible study that's going to start up uh, each uh, Monday uh, evening from 6.15 to 8 p.m. It's starting for all women, and this will run uh, through June 26th. Uh, Christy, do you want to say anything about it? We're going to have fun. That will be, what, what'd you say? Bring a friend, bring a friend and you're going to have fun too. <laughs> too. So bring a friend. It'll be a lot of fun. So that will be here at, at church um, starting May 15th from 6.15 to 8, 8 p.m. So uh, last but not least, uh, an announcement about um, uh, VBS. Uh, we've got our theme picked. We got our first registration today, which was fantastic. Uh, and uh, there's going to be many more. But uh, one thing that we need your help with, if you are a part of Thrivent, there's an opportunity to um, um, uh, apply for Thrivent Action Team cards to help uh, support our, our VBS this year. Uh, you can... Um, 
uh, check on the uh, back table. Is that where it's at? Other table, other, other side, by the, by the library and uh, where that's at, and take a look at things you can sign up for to help out our VBS this year, whether it's with food and you want to dedicate an action team card to helping out with food or crafts or any other materials. Take a look at the table uh, just uh, by the library for that information. So uh, any other announcements? Denise. Next week, last week of Sunday school, and then packets about uh, for the thriving cards. And those packets run you through exactly how step by step to apply for that thriving card if you need help with that. Keith? Garfield Firehouse, there's a pancake, sausage, and did you say and French toast feed if you're interested in that. Uh, any other final announcements? Great. With that, go in peace, have a great day, and serve the Lord.